Yo, people. Before we start today's episode, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors for this season, Watchbox UK. Based down in Hatton Gardens, they're leading the way in supplying you with the best prices for buying, selling and sourcing top of the range watches and high quality jewels. Head over to their Instagram, the link will be in the bio and make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Please enjoy the episode. Yes, people, and we're back with another episode of On The Duty and today we've got a Prem legend, Mr. Train When He Wants, Mr. Plays Every Week. <laughs> <laughs> Ledley King, what's going on, bro? How you doing? Yeah, I'm good, man. You good, good? yeah? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Thank you for coming on. Um, how's the knee first? Um, you know what? When people ask me how the knee is, I say I don't need it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's my first response because, uh, you know, obviously throughout my career it was, a, it was a problem, especially in the second half of my career. Yeah. Um, and now it's just like a relief, really, not to have to put my knee through that same stress that it was under. So... My knee's all right. It's, it's, it's been swollen once or twice since I've stopped. And it, it used to be swollen constantly when oh, I played. Serious? So that's the difference. You know, it's not under the same stress. So, yeah, that's no, good. That's decent. When, see, when it first happened, uh, let's think back. When it first happened, what was that your initial thought? Did you think, oh, just, a, <clears throat> just another another injury? Or did you know the extent of... Uh, so, yeah, it actually goes way back to my first actual start. Right, That was the first operation I had on my bad knee. My first full game. Started the game within 10 seconds, got clattered. Uh, I was playing in midfield, got fouled. <laughs> after the game, needed an operation. So Straight off. Played, played the 90 yeah, minutes yeah. after the game, needed an operation. That was the same knee that, <laughs> that no gave me way. problems throughout my career. But um, when I had, I had a big operation at 26, after that, I never felt the same. My knee never felt the same. Uh, and then my physio asked me, well, he said to me, Say you've got a thousand steps left. How are you going to use them? You know, Fierce. are you going to use seventy percent of them in training and thirty percent in games, or are you can just maximize the games. And lucky enough, I was able to. I had a manager first that, that allowed me to do it, and then secondly, I was I suppose good enough to be able to not train and yeah, still yeah. <laughs> kind of maintain my performances and play. So that that was the way it was. Did that? Did that cause any issues? Like, obviously, it, it's. You hear a lot of things behind the scenes that some managers say, yeah, you, it's too cold for you. You go out, you go inside, but like you rarely trained, but still performed. Did any of your like competitive centre backs want to not go on, go on. I was going to say that I think because I've been at the club since I was, I was 14, it was, I was captain and it was like my club that I feel like the players couldn't really say anything. But now looking back at it, they must have felt something. Do you know what I mean? I'm yeah. not out there training with them and I'm still getting picked. Uh, but what I tried to do was to make sure that, say someone had played three games and I'd been out, uh, and then the manager named the team and I was playing in the team. The other players out, I would make sure I speak to the player. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And just say to him, like, get your head up, keep going. Do you know? um, so I always tried to make sure I'd done that just to make, because I felt a little bit, Guilty in a way. Yeah, of course. Uh, especially when you're not in the training pitch at any moment and then you're just getting picked. It's tough. But at the same time, I was part of the furniture of the club <laughs> and I think players kind of understood it. Okay, okay. Yeah. Proper skipper, proper skipper. <laughs> um, I think back. When, again, when it first happened, yeah. like say after the the operation, yeah. are you thinking like, right, like, where, who did you have the conversation with to say, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to carry on but I'm not going to train or I'm going to, should I retire? The physios. Um, I never thought about retiring once. Not Decent. Sure. I don't know. What I did is I, I'd kind of, we had a change of managers straight after my operation. We had a one day Ramos come oh, in yeah, yeah. and we tried to tell him that I'm, I don't train. I'm not going to train. <laughs> he said, everyone's got to train. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to show him really. Um, what, show him that you can't show train? Him, well, train, yeah. and then showed him what happens when I train, oh, Okay, basically. okay. So I had to kind of go through that of you know, training, getting the swelling, being out for, for a few weeks or, or a week uh, till the swelling come back down. And by then, I think he'd seen that I made a difference in the team. Yeah, yeah. Just me being out there, you know, seeing what I could do, and he changed his mind and allowed me not to train. <laughs> um, so lucky for me, he changed his mind. I was able to do that. Um, and then it was just about 
getting as much as I playing as long as I could. Really, I, I forgot forgot about England. You know, England would try and pick me after I played two or yeah, three games. Yeah, I remember. I remember all of that. Yeah, but I'd always pull out because I didn't feel confident enough to 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 play an extra game. My biggest problem was muscles. I played one or two games, hamstring. Recover from that. Play another two, three games. Groin. That no, was, that was it for five years. Of is my, that of is that because you're you're not active yeah, as I much? Yeah, play running or, yeah. Or, or jumping or twisting or turning throughout the week. All. Throughout the week, I didn't do any of that. So in the swimming you... pool, in the in the gym, in the gym. So not, must... not, 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 not like. Not, <laughs> I was going to say, not, you must be the strongest person like, in the club. I mean, but just trying to keep everything strong. Yeah, yeah. Trying to keep everything. Well, my muscles strong. I was doing a lot of swimming, but then you go into the match, and then all of a sudden. You know, you, you've got to turn and sprint. I was never doing that through the way. What's your secret? Because Prem's the elite, mm, yeah, mm. top of the top. And for someone who didn't train, and again, you can't replicate the, the movements and stuff, can't keep up. How do you keep up with the intensity? Like, what's your secret? Mindset, I'm yeah? There. No, 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 but reading the game. Okay. Because I knew going into the game that my fitness was 50% of everyone's. I knew that my sharpness was lacking compared to the others, but I had to, I had to tell myself first of all, foremost, that football is football, right? It's not athletics, <laughs> it doesn't matter how fast you yeah, are yeah. or how quick you are, I know how to play football. So I'm going to let, I'm just going to play football. Yeah. I'm going to see the game, you know, when the ball's down there, I'm able to try to read the situation and it, that makes me one step ahead. So that helped me, that, that was a big thing, but also having that you have to have a mentality that just willing to not care about all the, the the things that are against you and just play the, play the game as you see it. Yeah, cool. Okay. So, now you've said that, which player did you think, like, if any, yeah. did you think, oh my God, like, I can't be bothered to play against him today? I can't be bothered. <laughs> no, <laughs> it was never. Never? The, the, listen, in the Premier League, you know that if, if you don't have a good game, you can get embarrassed yeah, by, of course, by, yeah. by anyone. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I always said Thierry was the best. He was, he's probably the one, the most that you think it could be bad. Yeah. If, if, I, if I'm yeah. it, yeah. if I don't perform, it could be bad. Um, so he, he's, the, he's the standout one. Other than that, I couldn't, I couldn't think like that. I couldn't think like that. I had to think about my own performance. If I played well, I'd be fine. So don't worry about the others. You know, as long as I'm, at my best, I feel like I can handle the best as well. Oh, decent, decent. And I get that. Just to touch on the, the not playing thing again. So you, you mentioned one day Ramos saying, come in, like everyone's got to train. Yeah. <laughs> from e interviews from past players, past managers that have come up, I'm not going to mention any names, like the chairman, he loves the clubs, quite involved. Is there any, was there any pressures from above on the managers about like, no, we have to protect this player? Like, or is it, did they find out themselves after you showed him your knee. When you say protect, what do you mean by protect? Like, he can't train, like let him do what he's no, doing. I don't, do like, he's doing. Yeah. I don't, no, I don't think so. I wasn't, no, no, I don't think so. Um, I mean, it's, the managers want to win games, don't they? And I think that they found out that the team was a better team when I played. And that that's what it was really. And I was aware of that. I was aware that at any moment, if I don't perform, they can get rid of me easily. Yeah, of course. You know what I mean, because I don't even train anyway. What's the point? <laughs> What's the point of being there? <laughs> yeah, if, but... I, if I can't, if I'm not going to perform on the pitch and help the team, then, you know, I might as well go. So I was aware of that. That's why I had to make sure that when I played, we were a better team. No, better. How do you reckon you would have coped in this day and age with the social media and everyone, everyone's got a voice on, on Twitter, Instagram, all of that? Yeah, I, like... think, I think, I think you're fine. I think, you know, if I would have kind of ball into that era, I would have been able to, to manage it. When I was growing up, it was a lot more old school. It was a lot more, uh, you know, you had to be tough, show no weaknesses, show no emotions, so to speak. It was a different different game. And then all of a sudden you're trying to trans, kind of transfer that halfway through your career or to the back end of your career and, you know, move with the, with the times. Um, some people find it, find it difficult to. Um, and I suppose really, now that I'm retired, I'm kind of able to, to kind of see things differently. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll, even going back to the time when I was injured, I was probably depressed. But you don't know the feelings, you don't know the signs. It's not yeah, something that you speak about. Um, so everything's different now. I think, I think it's in a better place. Speaking on that, did you, 
did you ever like contact anyone? Like, obviously, you're with the you're the physio's best friend, isn't it? Like, yeah, doctor's yeah, yeah. best friend. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Is yeah. there anyone else you'd spoke to at the club? Like, maybe, like now they've got all the therapists and all of that. Yeah, Back yeah. then, yeah. Who who could you speak to? Because physios aren't trained to deal with that. They're not. They're not trained to deal with it. But I think people, if they paid enough attention at times, you might be able to see things in, yeah. in someone or someone's not themselves. I think it was difficult with me. I was you know, chill anyway. You know what I mean, so mm -hmm. it wasn't like I was always loud and all of a sudden, you know, I'm really quiet and <laughs> showed signs of depression. It would have been difficult. Um, and as I said, you tried to hide it as much as, as, course, much as you yeah, can yeah, yeah. Back, in, back in them days. So it'd be very difficult. But I think we're, we're much more aware now that if someone, if you even think someone might be going through a difficult yeah. time, probably check in on them, don't you? So how are you doing mentally? How are you yeah. feeling? And I think that's a better. No, hundred percent. What was your, what was your day like? So wake up, mm. go into training like yeah. everyone else, didn't and then enjoy, what? Didn't enjoy it. Didn't enjoy it. like players. We want to play. We want to yeah. train. We want to be out with our teammates. You know, they was going out to train. I was going that way to the physio <laughs> room, and that, that was for five years. <laughs> you know that's what I mean? crazy, and man. Players f always feel guilty when they're injured. You know what I mean, they feel guilty. So at the same time, I'm trying to almost stay away from my teammates because I feel guilty. So when they come in from training, I'm trying to almost be somewhere else because of that guilt yeah. that you're not out there, you're not, you're not playing. And the whole, like, with even when they're all coming in laughing, yeah, you're exactly. missing out on you're a joke, innit? Yeah, you're missing a joke. You, and, well, you want to get in involved that night. <laughs> what, what, what's, what's the joke? What's the what, what happened? <laughs> it's not the same, is it? Yeah, of course, I mean? not, of course not. It's not the same. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's tough. It's tough to try and kind of find that balance. I, I only really got that on the pitch because all yeah. of a sudden I'm with my teammates. And that was where I got my joy and I was able to help and be part of the team. Throughout the week, I felt it was difficult. It was quite difficult. Of course, my teammates, I got on well with all of them. And, yeah. You know, they would never isolate me or do anything like that. But it's probably m me at times isolating myself because of the guilt. Yeah, yeah. This, it's good you think that because some people could let it get to their head, like become big headed, like I'm going to play regardless. But you're, yeah. you're, more no, grounded no, no, than no, them, no, isn't yeah, it? No, definitely. That was definitely one thing that I never wanted to be throughout my career, you know, like big headed. Yeah. Or, or arrogant. Um, you know, I used to talk to myself a lot in my head about what I could do. Well, you know, I felt confident playing against anyone. I felt like I had the ability as much as anyone that I played with, uh, against, or, you know, during my time in, mm. in, in the league. But I kept it inside. You know, I didn't tell people. Yeah. I didn't tell. You know, I just had to make sure that, that I was aware of that and that I was at my best. I think from your whole demeanor, you seem very grounded in that. But anyway, let's move on. Let's move on. What's life? You're from East London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's life growing up in East London like? Because I've got a couple of cousins can in town mm -hmm. and it's sort of quite, it's like a war zone out there. Like, <laughs> what was it like for you growing up? No, it was fine. It was fine. I was in Bo. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. So I grew up with like Ashley Cole. Yeah, Jaylord Samuel. We all grew played up for across this. the road. From, we all grew up across the road from okay, each other. Okay, yeah, decent. Um, and you played for um, Senrad. Senrad, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, luckily for me, I had football. Do you know what okay, I mean? if yeah. I didn't have football, then maybe I'd be telling you a different story about what what Bo was like. Yeah, I had a cage outside my house, so that's where I was every <laughs> single day. So parents knock out; yeah, they know yeah, where you yeah, are. Yeah, like I was in there with twenty other kids just playing football. That's all. We, that's all we did every single day. Um, so yeah, to, for me, the area was, a, was never an issue. I know that obviously it's not, uh, the most affluent of areas <laughs> to, to, to say the yeah, least, yeah. you know what I mean? But that's what I knew. When I mean, that's all you know, you don't really want for anything else, do you? So, you know, I was, I had a football, I had a cage. For me, the cage was like <laughs> the best thing in the world just to have that in my house, you know? So that was, that was my... You know, a gift for me to have a football pitch so close to me that my mum could see me. Yeah. Looking looking out a uh, window, call me when she needed me. If I wasn't in that cave, <laughs> I'd hear my mum <laughs> echoing from somewhere, you know, around the estate. Yeah. yeah. I was just yeah, gonna ask yeah, when yeah. the parents strict. Yeah. So I grew up like single parent really. My mum okay. my dad was in and out. It was my mum strict. She she was. She kept me on a straight and narrow. Yeah. Uh but I was, I think I was quite an easy okay. kid as well. <laughs> Not a troublemaker. Well, she would tell you differently from like, when I was young. 
But once I got to like 10, 11, 12, it was football. Yeah. That's all I was doing. So it was probably easy for her. Um, but I just wanted to do something for her and my, my family, like my, my grandparents, I was close to them. Okay. I wanted to do something for her. I wanted her to be proud of me. Decent, yeah. Um, and that was my, that was my motivation. Uh, my best friend at the time uh, was James. We like grew up from like five years old. He had his, you know, perfect family, you know, he's <laughs> lived in a house, he, you know, both parents, yeah, you know, siblings, you know, I, I lived in a flat, you know, no garden, all, all these things. And I, I kind of looked at his life and, you know, saw it as a perfect life. But at the same time, this is what made me hungry. On okay, the other yeah, side, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I wanted to, to, to do well. I wanted to, to give my mum a house and, and do all these things. And you managed to accomplish that. Well done, man. Well done. Um, Bo E3, the home of Grime. You a yeah, Grime yeah, fan? Yeah, yeah, man. Wiley. Wiley, <laughs> Wiley was, he was doing his thing from, better, from day, better. man. He was, he was doing his thing. Uh, you know, there was, there was music and the, then there was the football side of okay. things. So, yeah, we had the little... Uh, down Roman Road, we had the, yeah, the record yeah, yeah. shop down there. So <laughs> DCs season, yeah, all of that, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. that's where that's where you got their, all the MCs there yeah. doing doing their thing. Uh, yeah, so I, I enjoyed my time in uh, the, yeah. I'm gonna put you on a spot here. Go on. You don't have to. I know you got bars though. Oh, who <laughs> you told you that? <laughs> Listen, wait, nah, wait, wait, wait. Everyone, everyone's written a lyric. Don't spit it. Nah, just, nah. just admit. I, 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 I haven't got. No, no, no. Them days are done. They're way done. <laughs> Well, I'll just I'll kind of. <laughs> no, 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 no. Back in the day, no, yeah, back in the day, everyone had a lyric. We used to, we used to, yeah. we used to. But um, yeah, for for now, kind of, I still, I still like my gram. Yeah, of course, yeah. I still, I still like it. But it's not the same as when, yeah. I, when, when I was, and, and when I was playing, football was even more relevant to me because it's you're playing it for every game. Yeah, you, you're in the changing room all the time. You know, and you're playing music and you're listening to the new tunes all the time. And when you step away from that, <coughs> now you've got to kind of fend for yourself. Now you've got to find, you've got to find the tune. You've got to kind yeah. of keep up to date yourself. Yeah, of course, looking yeah. for them. Before I had my teammates that could <laughs> put me onto the new tune or yeah. this new artist or anything like that. So in a way, it's, it's, it's not the same as it was for me back when I was playing. It was, nah. it, was, it was a tool. It was a tool when you played. It was a tool for motivation and... 100%, you know I mean? yeah. So it's a little bit I think different. now, now it's all podcasts where like... I don't know about yeah, you. Yeah, in the gym, you'd listen to like yeah, podcasts are tunes that will yeah, pump yeah, you up yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. What podcasts make you laugh or in, yeah, um, yeah. encourage you to do better in life? Exactly. Yeah, man, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's mad. It's yeah, mad. Um, who did you support growing up? I'm glad we slipped away from that one. By the way, we're going away from that. <laughs> I said, I'm I, I'm I put safe, you on the spot, so I, I didn't want that. you to no. MC. No. Um, who did I support growing up? Oh, jeez. This is madness. All right. So, as I said, my best friend when I was like five. Yeah. Guess what team he supported? Millwall. Millwall. <laughs> Millwall. <laughs> okay, so that yeah, was the yeah. first team I knew about. Yeah, Millwall. Yeah. So Dad took me down there with him when I'm a kid. And mad, mad place. I'm sitting there. <laughs> hair in. Yeah, yeah. I'm hearing racism, left, right, and centre, all around me. I'm talking about when I'm like seven years old. You didn't understand? Did you understand it? Or... I understood racism. Okay. I understood racism, yeah, yeah because... You know, you're taught from a, from a young age not to let, you know, people disrespect you for the color of your skin and, and, and things like that. It's just, you're aware of it. You're always aware of it. I think, you know, parents will, will let you know that some people might treat you differently in life because of the color of your skin. Yeah. But, you know, don't let it affect you as much as, much as you can. Um, so I was aware of it. So when I used to go to Millwall a few times, I I hope there's no black players playing. So I didn't have to hear racism. Yeah, okay, you know I mean? yeah, yeah. That's nuts. I remember looking at the team, there was no black players. I thought, yes. And then the referee came out and he was black. I said, oh, man, he's going to get it. And that's, that's, oh. that, that's how I was feeling. That. That's how uncomfortable I was as a kid then. And it's, it's mad. Do you know what's crazy? You can't even, like, as a seven year old, you can't, even, you yeah, can't you tell can't people, say, like, you can't say, oh, James, I don't want to come because X, Y, and Z. So obviously I just stopped going. And my team was Tottenham. So team from was then, Tottenham. yeah? Yeah, yeah. Why? Team was Tottenham. Because, well, my dad supported Tottenham. Okay. I fair say enough. my dad was in and out of my life, but he yeah, supported yeah. Tottenham. Yeah. Um, and then just the players that, that we kind of had during that, that period of time, after, just after we had like Gaza and Lineker, yeah, yeah, players yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. And then Italian 90 was, was, was a big thing for me, that World Cup. And 
everyone fell in love with Gaza. Um, <laughs> was he at Tottenham then? He was at, yeah, yeah. I think okay, so, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that kind of era there was, I was, I was a Tottenham man from then. Decent, decent. And then, obviously you said you basically lived in the cage. When did you sign for Senrab? Senrab was from about seven, eight. And uh, we had a good team. We had a <laughs> What's good the team. secret? Because your age group, yeah. f- was it four or five made it? Five, yeah. Five made it. Then you got Jafo's age group. Yeah. A lot so of them made it. Him and Leon Knight were together. Like, and playing together. They were lethal. It must have been like two short, skillful, no rapid. I used to play, used to finish my game <laughs> and then kind of watch Jermaine and, and Leon on the other pitch and I just asked, what's the score? Man? Like, 15 nil. Jermaine scored no. six. Leon scored eight. And it was no just like, way. that's what they were doing there. Um, but yeah, my team, we had Bobby Zamora, Paul Konczewski, myself, John Terry and Jay Lord Samuel. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. That, <laughs> <laughs> do you, uh, is it one of them things, obviously, you probably didn't know, where a club knows about the whole team, where it nearly happened for my Sunday team, yeah. where a club wanted to take the whole team. Yeah. Did that it happen with yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. But at the time, we I'm not aware of this, because my friend's dad used to take me to football. Okay. So my friend Jay, his dad used to take me to football with him. Yeah every week so i'm not aware of what's going on you know what what they're talking about on the side i mean i was really whatever his dad told me that was it yeah i mean so if your dad told me um we're going liverpool i would have been going liverpool (laughs) i mean i (laughs) wasn't having these conversations yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so literally we went to leighton orient okay so we were all at leighton orient training there because it was local to us yeah and then everyone left and went different places. And I joined Tottenham at 14. Um, I think John, I can't remember John. I don't know if John was at West Ham for a little while. And then Chelsea. Uh, yeah, Lord he was, was at, Jay yeah, was at yeah. Charlton. And then, Aston, and then he went to Aston Villa. And, uh, Bobby might have been at West Ham as well for a little while. It was, it was kind of all over the place. But yeah, I went to Tottenham and that was me. Uh, was you guessed because it's the team no, but, support? But I went to Tottenham with two of my good friends as well. Okay, okay. So, like I say, I don't know the conversations. <laughs> All I know is three of us are going to Tottenham to train. And to this day, I don't know if I was part of their deal or they was part <laughs> of my deal, but the three of us went together. <laughs> so, I mean, but one of them lasted, stayed about a year. The other one done his YTS there. Yeah. Uh, and then didn't make it. But I look back now, they're, they're still friends of mine now. Yeah. And I forget that they played football. That's how, that's how tough the, the game is because at 15, they still had hopes of becoming a footballer, 15, 16. And now I'm 43. Uh, and I've known them all this time, but because they've been doing something else for so long, I forget that they were so close <laughs> to being footballers yeah. back then. And that was their dream. Do you, do you ever chat to them? Because again, like you say, only a few make it and everyone's got a friend the friendship that they develop through YTS and all of that stuff and your friends don't make it like what do you say to them like did you ever have them conversations yeah, it's tough because when you do when you leave school and do YTS you're training every day you're you know you should build up a good bond with them that group of people like training every day all trying to kind of make it through to the next next step which is a professional contract yeah and it's sad when it's almost like they, you, you go into a room and you're told you've got pro, you've got pro you've got professional mm. contract or I'm sorry you're going to have to let you go and that is like the toughest thing for some, that's probably the first real rejection that most people will get. And it's tough to come back from that. Yeah, of course. Some people don't want to feel that again. And then they go, go away from the game. But the ones that think, do you know what? This is one person's opinion or one football team's opinion. There's so many football teams out there. There's so many divisions. Yeah. I'm still going to make a career of myself. You know, if you have that mindset, You'll, you'll be fine. You can still play because you, you don't become a bad player like that. Nah. It's just getting over that mental block, that first rejection, and still believing in yourself. Because there's so many, there's so many options. There's so many different countries. So many different. No, you can still have a good career. Yeah, hundred percent. People need to to realize that rather than kind of quitting on the first first rejection. I feel like nowadays I coach as well, so I listen to the conversation that parents have and stuff, and it's like they want 
their kids to make it for them. Like it's their dream to have a professional footballer son or daughter. And it's like, it's, that's not it. Like you're going to push the it's love. Tough. It's tough though. I know it is it's tough. tough. It's tough. Because, because some it... kids like love it with their parents. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then some, they're like, dad's on me or mum and dad's on me like i don't like this no more you know what i'm saying i don't think we we all know how difficult it is to make it through but i I don't think kids at a young age really need to know how difficult it is yeah they just go have their dream they just gotta believe that they're gonna do because not for one second did i ever think that i was not gonna be a footballer (coughs) if you'd ask me at 10 11 years old what am i gonna be footballer (laughs) It was just like that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's naive. Most, most it's young naive. boys say that. Yeah, yeah. But I think as you get a bit older, 13, 14, now you can start to tell them a little bit more about yeah. how difficult it is. Yeah. But at the, at the beginning, let the, let the kids dream. Let them have their dream. Unless, you know what I mean? Unless they, they're not good at all. Yeah, that's, a, course, that's, yeah. A diff- that's a different thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? But when they're, they're good and, they're, and they, they, they believe in themselves, let them ride with that. What was your backup option? No, 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 no. People ask me now, "What well, you've been in for? Won a football?" I said, "I don't know, no idea." So, m- no idea. Mum didn't say make sure you. No, do- no, no, cool. I would say make sure you <laughs> make sure you do your, your yeah, schoolwork. Yeah. Of yeah. course, said, make sure you have something to fall back on. I didn't miss. I didn't. Like when, if you ask me at eleven or twelve, <laughs> do I want to be a footballer, or do I think I'll be a footballer? I wanted to be the best in the world at that age. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then I realized the world is big. <laughs> After a while, I thought, oh, okay. This this you know this what I mean? Because I played, I played played for England at like under 15, yeah. 16 level. And then I said, okay, this this Spanish kid's quite good as well, man. He's different. <laughs> He's different. So maybe I'm not gonna be the best in the world. Yeah. But okay, I'm gonna be the best in the world in my position. Okay, yeah. So that was my mentality. Before that, I thought, because I could do everything in school and like even in my youth team. I could dribble from back to front, do I was like <laughs> I could be like a big, big messy. <laughs> I was like a, in in the youth team. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, so I didn't see anything different. And then when I played for England and I played for diff- against different countries, okay. So now this one's a bit is a bit different to me. It's different. You <laughs> That's know? mad. Uh, okay, but I'm a defender. I'm gonna make sure I can be the best defender. Okay. So that's that's how it, it's sweet. That's mad because I think you're the first person to ever say that to like to be woken up by a different culture, different styles of play and realising yeah. that you're not the centre of the universe. I'm not. I, I, all of a sudden, I started seeing number 10 type players, you know, we, yeah. we, didn't, we didn't really have number 10s in England. <laughs> I mean, we didn't really have that. You know, I just see this kind of different kind of... Like, do I go and mark him? What am I doing? Different there? culture, this different... There's something different, you know? <laughs> the flair. Yeah, that, that kind of... Just that, yeah, that footed flair or, or something, that some different kind of skills. Because um, Ronaldo was my, my man. Yeah, yeah. But I watched him religiously. So that was everything he did, I was trying to do. <laughs> everything. You yeah. Know, dribbling, all the dribbling, the pace, the stuff. Like, I, was, I was doing all that uh, as a kid. Um, so I think I was actually a person that you could have molded into a different position okay, at a young yeah. age. Yeah. I could have probably, if I'd have trained here, I could have played in midfield. Um, if I'd have, listen, listen, you man, know. I, know he was, I know he was good, but don't. Get no. your head of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> just I stopped at striker. Though. Yeah, I didn't say striker. Let's, let's just relax. Say, yeah, let's just relax. Well, good. <laughs> let's just relax. We know, yeah. <laughs> Didn't you ever play? Against, did you ever play against Ronaldo? Or... Chris, no, no. Um, the Brazilian. No, no, no. Okay. Played against Ronaldinho. And what again, that's a different type of. You know I mean, that's not. <laughs> that's not him. I, I, yeah. I haven't got that. That that I haven't got that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but no, that's what I thought. Okay, defender. Well. Ronaldo had that no, no, as well. That's what I mean. Ronaldo had that. Yeah. But they they were they're different, you know. Um, do you know what's so mad? Like you just said, you wanted to do everything he done. You basically done with the knee. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I used to do the teeth thing, everything, <laughs> everything. Man. I was trying everything. What about the haircut? The knee? No, I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything. Man. That's yeah, crazy. But, yeah, for me, for me, I hadn't seen a player like him before. He, before he got injured, that's the that's the pinnacle of striker. Do you know what's so crazy? My like, I grew. I remember. France 98 yeah. and obviously he's doing his thing up until the final yeah. and then my mate show sent me a, years ago my mate show sent me a YouTube clip and it's like 10-15 minutes but he doesn't score but he it's never the same team it's always all these different teams and he's ripping everyone for fun because Italian football was big right? yeah in, yeah in, in Italian, the 90s yeah yeah in on the, channel in the 4 yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's what I grew up on so my, my favourite defender is Maldini Ronaldo was, was my striker but 
the best Italian defenders will tell you he was a problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? That when they when they speak about him, that's when you know. That's crazy. He was, he was different then. Okay, I'm going to copy a question that I saw somewhere. If you was to play now, yeah, who would you be able to stop, let's say, like the Harlands? Would you be able to pocket him? It's, it's different. It's Man City is such a good team that I would say that in one on one on one battles, I'm confident yeah. because that's that's how I feel. You know what I mean? I, I feel confident, but it doesn't work like that. <laughs> it doesn't just it's not just one v one. It's a tactical game. You know what yeah, I mean? yeah. There's good teams that will pull you out of position and make space for other things, yeah. and, and 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 that's the problem. So that's why he's so difficult to stop. Um, Harlan's not someone who's going to kill you with skills or anything like that. It's quick, yeah. So if, battle, yeah. if you know, you have he's probably relying on someone else to feed him for him to finish the ball. There's other players that that can pick the ball up from thirty yards, run with it. That's a different type of problem. Yeah, you know, that's someone who's going to be. A, I don't want to say a lot harder, but they make their own goals. So now, as a defender, I'm relying on someone else to stop the service, stop good service for Harlan. Yeah, of course. Yeah, to, to make it. Yeah, make yeah, it yeah. That's okay, why it's so you're, just, you're all about reading the whole. Yeah, but I'll never say that I can, because people say, can you keep someone quiet? Could you, you know, mark him out of the game? You can mark someone out of the game. The best players you can mark out of the game for 90 minutes and they could get one or two chances, one or two shots, and they could be in the, the back of the net. Yeah. So you've done all that work for 90 minutes, but they, they still scored one or two goals. That's why it's difficult. Do you know what I mean? That's why it's so difficult. I'm going to big up someone. Saliba pocketed Harlan, kept yeah, him quiet. Yeah, yeah. I, didn't, I missed the game when I was coming back from holiday, but... He's a good player. Yeah, yeah. Good player. But listen, we won't get into that. We won't get into that. I'm Arsenal, you're Tottenham. We won't get into that. We won't get into that. We're flying, man. <laughs> we're flying. What is the secret? I think the players are happy. I think the players are happy playing under a new, new manager, a new system. Now, one of the things that the manager said is he wants training to feel like when they were kids. So imagine that. Imagine being a professional player and your manager wants you traded to feel like when you were kids. That's like music to your ears, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. It's the best thing ever. You come into training buzzing, looking forward to, to training rather than thinking, oh, you know, what, what we're going to do today. That's a big thing. That's a big thing. So the players love going in every day. They love training. They're happy. They're able to express themselves. You know, mistakes is, is not an issue. Yeah. So... If you make a mistake, don't worry about it. Just get on with it. And when you play like that, Results you can be your best. You can be your best. That's when you express yourself. When you're not scared to play, you and uh, they're, they're flying. Listen, you're doing well, mm. but the weather's going to change. It's a long this. season. Yeah. It's a long season. Let's I know. See, <laughs> let's see how you finish. But I'm, I'm happy. Like I'm, I've got, I know Tottenham fans in there. I've never seen a buzz like, them, yeah, yeah. like this for no, them. No, no, the fans so are, the fans are happy, buzzing. But, but we're, we're close. I don't think, Listen, I don't think the fans are getting <laughs> carried away yet. But I just think they're happy that Listen, they're playing you're not on the social style of football. Right. You're not on social right. Are bit. you on yeah, Twitter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Re just Google yeah. Ange. Yeah, hashtag yeah, yeah. Ange yeah, yeah, and yeah. see what people are writing. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's like you lot have won a league already. But anyway, I'm going to let you lot have your moments. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens. I'm going to yeah, yeah, so shout. It's a long season. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm going to shout your boy we'll at the end of the we'll season and see what's going on. Do you reckon Kane will be a big miss? Because obviously you you're you're... Now, what's your role at the club? Actually? I'm an ambassador. You're an ambassador. You're yeah, you're yeah. there a lot. Yeah, yeah. You see what's yeah, going on. Yeah. Will he will he be missed? Best players, are you always going to miss them in some kind of way? But at the moment, he's not being missed in terms of. Um, it's difficult because obviously the football's changed. Since, yeah. You know, he was playing in a different system, a yeah. different team. But what's allowed? Teams to not miss him as much is that they're, they're getting bodies forward, they're creating chances from all over the pitch. Yeah, it's a different style, and I think that's helped the team. You know, if it, if it was the same same system before, um, then it'd be different. Yeah, it'd yeah. be different. But now, you know, there's there's times where the team have created 20, 30 chances. You know, to get different people popping up in different areas, different people scoring goals. So that has really helped. Um, but Harry's Harry's. Amazing player, amazing player. <laughs> like me and my other, like me and my mates, we talk about this all the time. And like they, I don't think because he's been at Tottenham and he scored all these goals and not won any. They're like, yeah, but he's da 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 da. I'm like, but he's still a world class striker. Like in his role, he's you can't win it on your own, can you? It's, of course, it's difficult, yeah. You know, this football doesn't. It's not like that. Um, 
Oh, there's no doubt he's worth five. No doubt. Like, there's... I mean, I'm going to ask you, do you think he's as good as Haaland or better than Haaland? Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, like, I obviously, see. age isn't on his side, yeah, but... Yeah. But left foot, left foot, right, right foot, foot, in front of goals, like, it's crazy. Up play, passing, if, if he went City, you know? if he went City, they would have scored 100 yeah. goals yeah, yeah. and won the league by yeah, miles. Yeah. But... So that's why I don't like the thing as in people will only put you at that top, top, top level when you when you play for the top team that's winning thing. Yeah. I think sometimes you can see if someone's good enough, you know? We all know how he's that, yeah. that guy, you know? We know he's that, that good, regardless of whether he goes to by Munich and wins five trophies <laughs> now. That's not going to change how good he was and how good he is, really. Yeah. Like, okay, what you just said there, do you think you get the respect you deserve? Because, again, you couldn't train but performed on Saturday. So do people ever compare, like, before you got injured yeah. to you injured? Because let's, let's be honest, that yeah. was two different players. Yeah. It's, it's two different... It's like my career was in half, really. But what I'll say is that the first part, I felt like I was on a a trajectory that was going to enable me to be one of the best in my position yeah. in the world. Because um, as a, as you get older, you, you mature as a defender. So I was looking forward to kind of reaching them years of you know, peak prime uh, defender. So obviously once I stop training and do that. I kind of hit that, that, that ceiling. Yeah. And then it's probably like a steady de well, decline from there. So that's difficult for, like, I understand how it could be difficult to, to sum it up. Um, you know, my teammates will tell you, you know, what I was like to, to, to play with. I yeah. always believe that, but it's right that I can't, be put in the same bracket, I suppose. What you can say is, he, 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 ability wise, he had everything, everything yeah, that yeah. the others had. Yeah. But I didn't have the career that they had. Yeah. It's as simple as that. You know what I mean? They, they went on to bigger, better things, which is, which is fine. But, you know, had, had I not had the injuries, then it would have been different. But that kettle on your wrist says you had a decent career, though. I'll give you that. <laughs> you know what? To tell you the, the truth, this, this is one of my first purchases. <laughs> A long, long time ago, one of my oldest purchases. So, in a way, it doesn't even tell you I had a good girl because I bought it. So, I bought it when I was so young. That Listen, I'll, I'll it was like my you first, it was like, it it was like my first contract. So that's that's way back. It could have ended after that. Yeah, you know what I mean? could have had a different you, conversation. Have I still have to yeah. watch with it. I had a different conversation. But yeah, yeah no, I'd, I'd probably sold it. Yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> All right, cool. So again, being an ambassador, and you you're at you're at the club a lot. I'm gonna name some players. I want you to say who's who excited you the most, like watching them play, even like playing with them. So you got Bell, Defoe, Kane, Ericsson, and I'm gonna put Dembele in there. So that's five. Who would you who would you have loved to play with? All of them. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, of course. Of course. <laughs> like, I played obviously I played with Jermaine, I played yeah. with Gareth. Yeah. Right? I would have loved to have played, but like, I played with great strikers. As I say, Jermaine, I played with Robbie Keane, uh, Berbatov, played with Teddy Sherner, Ferdinand. But no one scored the amount of goals that Harry scored. You know, no, one's, no one was a 30 goal a season. Consistent man. as well, yeah. And to have that in your team, like, that's, I would have loved to have had that in my yeah. team. Um, Musa, the, most people tell you he's the best player they played with at the club. That's what they would tell you about Musa. Dembele. I remember playing against him when he was at Fulham and he was number 10. He was playing number 10. <laughs> Martin Yo was the manager. So he was my former manager. Yeah. And after the game, like we beat them 3 1, but after the game, I said to Martin, Dembele, he's a good player, yeah? I said, he scores three goals a season. And he's kind of complaining about that. Harsh. But te like, technique and everything was unbelievable. Can't get but in a way, we actually saw the better of him once he moved back. Yeah, yeah. So when, once he started playing deeper. So I think he was just so gifted that he could play anywhere type of thing. But when he played deeper, that was the best position for him. Like, you couldn't get past him. Mm -hmm. You couldn't get the ball off him. It was, it was that, that easy for him. He was, he was a player. Okay. But, but Gareth, 
Gareth is the player that's reached the highest level of everyone. Yeah, he, for me, like, from the career, from the start of his career, yeah. to where he where he ended is yeah, he's crazy. Know. He, I mean, Gareth's quiet. He's a quiet kid. So to look at his career now, what he's had it's crazy because when he left Southampton to come to Tottenham, he was just a quiet kid. Um, I don't think anyone expected him to have the kind of career he had. Yeah. What, what I did see, he could be a great left back, like one of the best in the world in his position. Yeah. Left back or wing back. He had a one, he could run. <laughs> Rapid. But away. somehow he just turned into something different. Like he's, and his confidence grew and then we just had to start playing him in positions <laughs> where he could affect the game. Any, like basically anywhere. Yeah. Just going to affect the game. Because so his running power and his shooting power was so good that he just turned into a different animal. Like, it was crazy. Fair enough. I feel like I'm going to be a bit critical on Tottenham. Not nothing bad, but I feel like you lot have always relied on one player to carry you lot. And when they go, that's when, as a team, you perform better. So, like, you'll scrape away with, with, with you had Gareth. Yeah, yeah. He would score the last minute goal. You had Harry Kane rely on his goals. And now they've gone. Now you're like, everyone's contributing to what I'm saying. I think the difficult thing has always been that we, we lost our best players a lot of the time. Mm. You know what I mean? Along the way. Yeah. And that's always difficult. So like throughout my time, I've been there, you know, you're starting to build, get something going. Then, and then you lose a player. Like, you know, I remember it happened with Michael Carrick, went to Man United. Then you, you start to rebuild again and you lose Berbatov, Man United. Yeah. And then, then Robbie goes to, to, to Liverpool yeah. or Jermaine or, you know. And it kind of sets you back again a little bit and then you kind of build again. Before I, before I retired, that was the best team I played in. Like, my last season, we finished, we finished fourth in my, in my last season. So even in the year I, I retired... We, I think we finished fifth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't, no, I don't think no? so. I think you might have finished above us still. I think. Uh, okay, okay. I think, but, oh, but no, it was after you... We went. finished fourth and couldn't play in the Champions League because Chelsea oh, won the Champions League. Oh, and they didn't get... They, they got finished about like six or seven. But I think, they, I think so they only they let Liverpool in, do that rule. They had to, huh? I think they, Liverpool, because Liverpool finished fifth and they still got to qualify. Yeah. Okay, okay. yeah. So, but, um, <laughs> the, the, no, to, uh, Modric. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Van der Vaart. Bow. I mean, that... You know, and then you got Lennon. You got... Who else did we have? We had a... Uh, we, had, we had players, you know what I mean? No, we had a good team there. Myself, Woodgate was 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 a, no, I'm not sure Woodgate would say it, right at the end, but Modric was a unbelievable player as well. Modric, Van der Vaart, what players? That's mad. That's what mad. players? <laughs> who was the who was your craziest teammate? Like, I want some stories now. Craziest? Uh, <laughs> David Bentley was. was he, a, he 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 yeah. had a, He's a name that popped into yeah, my head. Yeah, he was a. Uh, he just wanted to, he just wanted to do what he wanted to do with no rules type of thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he wanted, so again, he kind of grew up a little bit old school at Arsenal. He's probably used to some of the English kind of <laughs> boys at Arsenal, yeah. Arsenal before Arsenal Vigor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he, he wanted to still kind of live like that as a footballer, but football chain. I mean, but a lot more eyes became on football yeah. than, you know, phones, social media. You know, if you ask him if he want, what does he want to do, football or be a rock star, he'd rather be a rock star. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the way he wanted they, to, and then he wanted to be a football yeah, rock star. They they I mean, kind of tattered him to be the, the next Beckham, yeah, innit? Yeah, but he, he had the ability. Yeah. Honestly, he had the ability, but he fell out of love with the game because he felt like it became robotic. Do you know what I mean? The, too many rules. Yeah, yeah. Too much. No, you can't express to have fun. yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he retired at like twenty nine. Like, it's, it's a waste because he had so much talent. Give me a story. So we'll start the matter. We'll, like, don't don't we'll kill him. Don't kill him. But... No, no, no. <laughs> uh, I tell you who 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 was crazy. Like, definitely when I was young was uh, Ben Thatcher. I don't know. I can't yeah. remember Ben Thatcher so, now. Yeah, Thatcher was a was a lively one. Like just in terms of you go on a you go on pre match walks. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. like you're staying in a hotel away yeah. from home. You go on. Like a pre match meal before before you eat, so maybe 11 o'clock just to stretch our legs. Yeah, it's a three o'clock kickoff again on a little stretch our legs walk. So we're around the city center or whatever. And I just remember when it was like, like, we're just walking and then we just had some splash. Like, what? <laughs> Fletcher's just diving into a river, like, he's just like that guy, like, you can't, you can't get away with these things now because 
It's just what? different. It's just, it's just diving into a river on his own. Like it's just, just there. Well, you know, he's that's the kind of <laughs> kind of craziness he, he, he would do. Uh, yeah, there's there's some things that probably most of these things that yeah. I probably probably can't say. Yeah, of course, of course, of course yeah. <laughs> but no, he was he was a lively one. But football was it was a bit different back then. You used to have characters like you always get you'd always get people doing things to people's clothes. Yeah, or, the band, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Robbie, Robbie was another one as well. <laughs> like, I remember um, like Robbie stole someone's or, or managed to get into someone's phone, swap a number around <laughs> so that this person was texting Robbie no. <laughs> instead of a girl, instead of the girl that he thought no he was texting. No way. <laughs> Better. So he's changing. Better. So we're, we're on the team bus getting all the messages that he's sending. <laughs> we're replying back. He's trying to get like saucy with it, you know what I mean? We're, we're, we're giggling at the back. I bet that's He's talking about oh, when I get to the room, I'm going to send you a picture. And all this. <laughs> <laughs> we're all playing to it. That's cool. Cool. You know? cool. So, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, all right, so, cool. Yeah, you can't, like definitely can't do that there. Yeah. It'll get leaked. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, now it'll get leaked. Um, who's your favorite manager? Uh, oh. Let me go through them, yeah. George Graham was my first. Okay, yeah. Then I had Glenn Hoddle. Then I had Jack Santini for like six months. <laughs> Martin Yo. Yeah, yeah. I had one day Ramos and then finished with Harry Redner. Uh, I think Glenn had a lot of potential. Like he was he was a young manager when I was when I was in his team. I was a young player, he was a young manager. I felt like he had a lot of potential. Yeah. Like he saw the game different, like the, the way managers are seeing it now, yeah. you know, playing different systems. You know, back in the day, it was normally four four two. He was like that the was, first. That was like it. it. Yeah, 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 he was like he wanted to play three five two because because of certain reasons. You know, yeah. I could get extra midfielder in. I could still have two up front. I could. So I liked him, uh, but the best time was under Harry. That was like my favorite period. Harry was great because Harry just knew how to get the best out of players. Yeah, I mean he had a, he had an eye for talent. So if you had a a player that played at another club that was a bit say naughty. You know, or people thought he was he was a bad egg. Yeah, that was the kind of character that Harry liked. You like know what a mean? Bring it, I'll get I'll get the best out of him. Get him going. We brought in Adebayor. Adebayor. Some people used to say things about Adebayor. I mean, when he was at Tottenham, he was great for us. He was, uh, yeah, he, he was great. And Harry just knew how to get the best out of people. Adele was unbelievable, Billy. Adele. Adele. <laughs> he was crazy. Isn't it? Uh, probably the most ability of anyone that I played with, but. Didn't know how to use it, you know. Yeah. Makes sense, do you know what I mean? He could do, like he could put the ball through your legs with no problem. <laughs> Not mine, but <laughs> yes. no, I, I wasn't training. So, so I got, you weren't training, but, yeah. You. No. Um, but then he'd give it away. Okay. You know what I mean, yeah, so yeah, yeah, that yeah. part of the game was was missing. I remember this first game he, put, he come on, he like got the ball, he started doing all these step overs, started dragging, like, <laughs> going mad. He slipped it through someone's leg and then passed it out of play, unopposed. I mean, and that oh. kind of summed him up in a, yeah, in, in yeah. a way. No end products, yeah. It was that that was missing. But he, he had a billy. He had some ability. All right. Um, what was North London Derby's like? Tent. So I started, my first one was playing against Seoul. Okay, yeah. So yeah. the first one I ever played in was when Seoul had left. <laughs> so. You see that? Okay, you see that? You get like pre-warned, like... Not pre one, but like, there's a Ganager Gashrot saying that like, he's a Judas and, you know, the crowd's going to be on him. I don't, yeah, I'm no, just no, asking, no. isn't it? Because the crowd was there. The no, crowd no, doing no, it. no, no, uh, uh, no. No, the crowd do it. Yeah. Um, but did, did, does the manager tell you to, like, go with the no, crowd? And... No, no, no. Not, not in terms of individual, like, any one individual, okay. really. I suppose it depends on the manager. But um, normally, back in them days, it was like, we was we read pa papers, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. So normally you find something in the paper that someone had said. Yeah, yeah. That was going to wind the, other, the opposition up. <laughs> so when we used to get that, we used to stick it on the check line and change it on walls. You know what I mean? Fabregas had said this. Do you know what I mean? So we used to put it on the wall and try to use it as, as motivation. Um, the problem is that Arsenal were a really good team. That was the tough part. We got had, a, in you your, in your they, house, we got the better of you quite a few times. my career, I, like, I hardly beat Arsenal. <laughs> Was nope. Henri, Perez, um, Vieira. Yeah, that I invincible mean, Lombard, it? and Sol and you know, the, these types of players. So it was difficult. We had to play really well to get a draw. Because <laughs> there was there, there were a different level yeah, that, so, yeah. at the time. So 
you know, the fact there was a derby kind of give us a little bit more <laughs> that made us perform better better than we we should have really. Uh-huh. Um, the atmosphere for them games is crazy. It's crazy. Uh, how does it feel knowing that you're the last skipper to lift a trophy? Um, it's kind of catch twenty two. Bit sweet, yeah. Bit sweet. Yeah. That's the word. Uh, I, listen, the, I, I, I wish the club. I want the club to win trophies. I mean that that's it's been too long. Um, yeah, I never did I think that it would be it would we go this long without winning a trophy. But it's difficult. It just becomes more and more difficult, <laughs> as you see with the city now. Wanna, they want to dominate everything. You know, they want to win every cup. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we've got so many good teams in the Premier League that it's so easy for another year to go past without actually winning things. Yeah. You know, what I mean, you make one or two mistakes uh, in these cup competitions, you're out of the cup. You know, the league, we're not a team that's been ready to win the league, mm-hmm. you know, so really we have two two chances. The Champions League, although we've got to the final, it's not a competition where you expect Tottenham to yeah. win it. So, you know, you have the FA Cup and the League Cup and and then you're trying to rotate at times as well, trying to get other players in the, in, in the team, some games, in games where you think we should still beat this team. And then you slip up, and then that's another year. You know, it's difficult. And tough then you, forever you playing catch final, up in it. And you're playing against a top team in the final. <laughs> so, you know, we've been to finals, but then we're playing against a Chelsea or we're playing against a Liverpool. Or a, and it's, it's been tough. It's been, it's been tough. Um, yeah, so, you know, I'm hoping that they, that they, they win something soon because our fans deserve it. Yeah. You know, there's, there's, there'll be fans that are 20 years old, but, well, maybe. Just about remember the the last final. Um, I think it's time. That, yeah, it's time. For, it's time to reward our fans. With that's something, what I say, Hopefully, yeah. That's what I say to the little Tottenham fans. Yeah. Like, our coach, I'm like, listen, you've never seen your team win a trophy. Yeah, like, yeah. What's I mean, that? the younger kids, yeah, if they're like 10, 11, 12, uh, you know, yeah, then that's tough. Um, but it does make it sweet, you know. The, the people that I speak to that were there at the last time we won the trophy, that's like they say, like it's the best feeling for them like the best day that they've had yeah um, and that's what it does yeah that's that's what it gives you that that, that kind of feeling so when it does come around it what was the party like after us yeah it was good <laughs> it meant, uh, just good to, to... Uh, to be fair to me, you know yeah, yeah, it could be just good because it's one of them middle of the season finals in it so you don't want to go yeah, too February, wild yeah February. yeah but we went directly straight no we went to Wembley after family friends yeah and, yeah uh, you know um, and then we took a bus, the team coach, to face it. <laughs> we, so we, we're rocking up off the, off the coach outside faces. I think there was cameras there as well, like, which is bad. Um, but it's like the best, it's the best thing in the world yeah. to share that moment with your teammates. But the semi final, for example, we beat Arsenal 5 1 in the semi final. And we Probably went out. Be, you, you beat our kids 5 1. No, no, that's no, no, our no, kids. No. You, team. Have to, no, you, listen, have to, you have to pull up the team. That's our kids. I it's will, a, it's but, a oh, yeah, but it's still our kids. It's cup. Like, we're beating our youth team, beating like Sheffields and okay, that, like 8 0. Okay. Come all on. Right, all right. <laughs> so, so after that game, we went out, right? and this was the best night because and this is what sometimes a night out can do is it brought us so, so together yeah. that we was. I don't know where we was, but it didn't matter where we was. We got in a huddle <laughs> and we promised each other that we're going to win the final. Drunken huddle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but not, not everyone is drunk. Yeah. But, yeah, listen, but people relaxed. People committed to the, the team, you know, yeah. feeling, you know, and everyone spoke about why we're going to win the final, what, what we're going to do. What we're gonna, and that, that was a promise that we made to each other um, on the dance floor or wherever <laughs> we was. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> wherever we was. Okay, and then we, okay. we, had to go, we had to follow it through. No, decent. Well done, man. It, it, yeah, I think t- in football, the hardest thing, the two hardest thing is to make it to the top level and to win a trophy. So yeah, yeah. you're one of the people that can say they've done it. It's, it's difficult. It's not on easy. We've, you know, we've seen, you know, as we spoke about Harry and the, the, the quality he has. And even look at someone like a Hugo Lloris who's won World Cup. Yeah. You know, but hasn't won a trophy. It just shows mess, how, yeah. how tough it is in the, in, the, in the English Football League to... To, to win things, it's tough. It's crazy. All right. So, 
career we spoke about when did you consider when did you think right i've got a i've got to retire i'll tell the truth i didn't i never really i always felt that once the season's finished i can reinvent myself and come back um and the, the last season i had i actually played like first i missed the first couple of games and then played like the next 10 games or something like that we hadn't lost in them games we were unbeaten in 10 games. I was feeling really good. Yeah. So 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 good that I was training mm -hmm. the day before a game. Mm -hmm. I was buzzing around. <laughs> I was actually really feeling good. And then I've collided with uh, a young goalkeeper that we have. He's come down on my knee. Oh. My knee's just blown up. I was out three, four weeks. We just took the fluid out in the end. We just took loads of fluid out of my knee because we had a, a game against Man City coming up. Mm. It was like we were both top of the table at this time. Um, so I wanted to play that game, although I wasn't ready. Played the game. We were 2 0 down. We got back to 2 2. And the last minute, I gave away a penalty. It was a Balotelli, Balotelli score. Yeah, yeah. Um, and really, that was kind of the first game back after the knock. But I didn't feel the same after that. So the next part of the season, I wasn't the same. It wasn't That's like I was. If I was 50% before, now I'm like 20%, 20 for like I That's could mad. not move. Yeah. So I struggled. I was struggling, really struggling through. Ended up playing 23 games that season still. So to retire on a, <laughs> when you play 23 games, it sounds quite weird that I still managed to play 23. Yeah. But it was just like the quality of my games was just going down. I couldn't, couldn't move. And after the, the, the season, I spoke to my surgeon and he said, it's time now. You know what I mean? You're going to put yourself in a, in a wheelchair in your thirties that's mad. Um, and listening to him and then judging by the way it felt because for the first time I didn't enjoy football when okay, I was on the pitch I didn't enjoy it because it was just a struggle a it was real just struggle. in your head thinking yeah it's like... gonna move it's gonna move so that was that was when I conceded that it was time did you have things in place obviously you're an, you're, a, you're an ambassador at the club yeah, but yeah. did you like outside of football not really I wasn't one of them people that that allowed myself to think too far away from the game. Yeah. Obviously, along the way, you try to to put things in place in terms of investments along, yeah. you, along your career, which yeah. is different. I, I wasn't someone who planned what I was going to do after. I didn't want to... And it's probably, you know, I've got respect for people that can do that, that they're able to switch off from their football and think about other things. I couldn't do that. Like our football was constantly in my head. Yeah. And I didn't want to think about, because I felt like I'm, then I'm taking away something from my football if I'm thinking about other things yeah, and getting yeah, involved yeah. in other things. And that's the way I was. So I didn't even, you know, when I retired, it wasn't like I, I knew exactly what I wanted to do after. It wasn't like that. Um, luckily for me, when I sat down with the club, we had a conversation and they offered me uh, I was an ambassador straight away, which was important because it gave me a new purpose um, to be around the same people that I've been around in, in my whole career, to take away that kind of boredom of, you know, that, that, you, know you might have two or three months where you're not doing anything yeah, yeah. and, you know, that's not something that, that that's good for anyone. Um, so yeah, to just keep me ticking over, to keep me involved, give me a responsibility was important for me. And yeah, it's been a wow. it's been a smooth transition because of that. Um, do you regret not having a big enough impact to England? Like you was part of the golden generation, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So for myself, um, England was difficult. But England was like I, I made my debut at twenty one. Um, I went to the Euros in two thousand and four. Yeah, I was twenty three, and. First game against France, John Terry was injured. Rio was, I think, he was out sus suspended mm. or something. Um, and I played the first game against France. Done, done well in the game. We lost two one. Zidane scored two like ninety minute goals. So That's the penalty. Scored a pen, yeah. Penalty in a free kick. <laughs> um, it's crazy. But um, the next game, I don't play, which is fine. I know, I understand it more if you've got an ex very experienced player that's coming in back into their yeah. team. The difference was, John Terry only had like two caps more than me at that point. So, 
it's like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And if you play well and you don't keep your spot at that point, it's like, oh, what, like, because I remember there was players that were defeated already that were in the squad. <laughs> like, and uh, I used to think, well, why are you, why are you so defeated? It was like Emil and yeah, Kieran yeah. Dyer and Joe Carl, and it's, it's, it don't matter what you do, you don't play. And uh, I thought differently. I thought, nah, that, that's, that won't be true. And then that kind of happened. So that after that, it was like, England's difficult to really get into, okay. to, to play. Um, just played in midfield quite a bit for England. I started playing in midfield. Um, but yeah, it was, you know, it was difficult for me. I never really felt that comfortable in England. It was a difficult time. We, we would probably say that we underachieved because we didn't get on well enough. Not that we didn't get on, but not yeah. to the, the extent that the team do now. Look at them. They yeah, all, they were friends, friendly. isn't it? Yeah. We kept our rivalry still a little bit there. You know, our guards up. <laughs> yeah, that north and south divide. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not, like, not even that. Like, it's just south and south as well. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tottenham, true, Arsenal, yeah. Tottenham, Chelsea, and <laughs> Man United, Liverpool's, and okay, yeah, you know yeah. that, that right, you can't so keep the guard up subconsciously. You know, we still get on. We 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 still, but not really to the level that you see now. And that's why they, the England team now is a, is a better team. It's, yeah. just, it's like a club. It's like a club for them. And we never let that let, let go enough to really perform as well as we should have. Okay. Um, I should have asked this earlier, but again, at your time, at, I know I asked you about the craziest player, yeah. but was there any fiery incidents that happened? Obviously, you're in the, you're in the physio room, so you definitely heard some shouting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's, there's always, listen, when you're playing in a, you know, playing under intensity that you, you know, that you're playing at, you're training at, we were all friends, you know, <laughs> as teammates, but yeah. at the same time, if you're playing games in training, you know, you just want to win. Yeah, yeah. You know, if someone does a bad tackle, you know, you can get upset at times. So there's always, there's always occasions, you know, there's, there's been situations there was, I remember coming in one time and Edgar was inside and he said he's, he's leaving and I said, what happened? <laughs> and then I heard that him and Robbie got into it on the pitch, him and Robbie Keane. Um, but they're both like, Robbie Robbie could be fiery, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like Robbie wanted players to do well, like to perform, to work hard. Edgar would have been the same, do you know what I mean? I don't know what, I don't know what happened, but it was over. Um, <laughs> And they had a little nothing, they had a little tear up, and then uh, after everything was fine again. Do you know what I mean? Um, see, it you happens. See, see you being skipper. Yeah, like, yeah. Did they ask you to step in and be like, mediate? Yeah, no, I spoke to Edgar because Edgar was upset at, at that time. Uh, so, yeah, I spoke to, to Edgar. It was lucky, lucky, luckily for me, Edgar had come in, and obviously I'm, I was just in a change room at that point when he came <laughs> in, and he started unpacking his locker. So then we spoke and you know, we managed to calm, <laughs> managed to calm him down. Do you know what I mean? Calm him down. Uh, <clears throat> but we had one player called Dalmat, Stefan Dalmat. Yeah, 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 I remember the he name. He joined yeah. the club on loan and he was talented. And we were struggling at the time. But he was, he was a problem. Every day in training, he was a problem. He, he had it. I don't know if it was a language barrier, but he was just miserable. <laughs> so he's in the changing room and he's just looking at miserable like he's looking for, for trouble. Yeah. Um, and then on the training pitch, Honestly, there must have been three times in a week he would be sent in from the training pit to sit in because he, <laughs> he'd done something or he'd argue with someone. Or he, and I actually remember him and Jamie Redknapp getting into it on the pitch, arguing. And Chris Hewton was one of our coaches. Yeah, yeah. And Chris is like the nicest guy in the world. <laughs> like, he's an unbelievable guy. Dalmat done something to him. And I've never seen Chris lose it like that. Chris lost it. Serious. Chris lost it. Chris went for it. We're holding Chris back. <laughs> he went for you it. You know, like, he wasn't, I don't think he was going to do that. Yeah, but he, yeah, was, but like, like, he yeah. was like, <laughs> incensed. And Chris is like the nicest guy in the world. But Dalmat was a problem at the time. He used to be sent in three times a week from training. Um, so he, he was probably the, the one teammate. And, and again, I never really had a problem with him individually, yeah, yeah. but a lot, of, a lot of the teammates, a lot of my teammates did. He was, he would have been the most difficult one to, uh, I've dealt with throughout my career in terms of just, just a problem. Every other day, a problem. That's mad. Yeah. Do you ever like do the big brother thing? Like, come on, like what's going on? Da, 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 da. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
another situation, uh, Van der Vaar and Asukoto got into it. Oh, that's Asukoto didn't like football. Is that true or is that just a rumour? Yeah, when he first came, he didn't really like it. Didn't like it. He was just good at it. Yeah. You know? But for <laughs> me, he, he, had so, he was a good player. He had so much ability. If he actually cared enough, rather than just do it to get by, yeah, if he yeah. actually wanted to be the best, <laughs> he, he could have been. Okay. Top. Um, I feel like as he got older, he started to appreciate more. Okay. So yeah, he, wasn't yeah. one of the, he was one of them people that didn't really know who we were playing <laughs> the day before a game or, you know, the, or on the, on the team bus who were playing. <laughs> You know, it just didn't matter. It didn't matter to him. He was so relaxed. That's right. And he was someone that just, he was a different character. And again, when you've got Harry Redknapp, Harry knows how to deal with people yeah, like that because yeah. Asu Okoto would do everything that he told him not to do. <laughs> right? So as a manager, you're going to get in a fight with this player because you, you're trying to set down rules and yeah, they're not listening. He's not going to listen, yeah. Or you've got to kind of just allow him to be a bit and different. As long yeah. as he's performing on the pitch. Exactly. Yeah, and, that's, yeah. and that's how Harry was. You know, as long as you, you're doing it for me on the pitch, you know, do do what you want, you know, within the boundaries. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. If it's just, oh, he's wearing a hat, just, just <laughs> let it go, you know? Just let it go. So Because so if, if, if you're a manager and I say, take your hat off, and you say no, where does that leave me? To be fair, I, I, mean, I, like, I mean, I've got a problem yeah, with that. I was like that like in school. If take your hat off, no chance. If you say no, I'm like, so take it off. And you said, no. And then what do I do? Oh, you've got to walk away. <laughs> Fuming. Fuming. Or I've got to kind of get up yeah, to you yeah, and take yeah. it off you. And then it's, it's a problem, you know? Yeah. So that, that is tough. But Harry was really good at that. That's what call. And it's mad because you're everyone's an adult. It's not like you're talking to kids yeah, where yeah, they have yeah. yeah, yeah. now it's that. Yeah, yeah. That's but listen, there has to be discipline yeah, in, cool, in yeah, football. Yeah, 100%. And, and 100%. That's, the, that's the kind of the, the thin line, you know, being able to still have discipline, but not take away everything. Some managers, they, they just take away. Just want to control everything, you know yeah. the silly things. Capello was a bit like that with England, you know, just silly things that you, you couldn't do, and that, things like that just upset players. Well, like no catch up. Yeah, there was, no, <laughs> there was no catch up under one day Ramos. Yeah, no catch oh, up, no sauce. Only could drink water. But in the end, players start sneaking things. Yeah, they? yeah, you know don't, I mean? yeah. They start, they start sneaking things in their bags for away trips <laughs> and things like that. So it becomes <laughs> that's what, so. What happened with Asokoto and Van der Vaart? Ah, uh, they they was arguing over a free kick. That's that's we won the game, <laughs> won the game. Them two arguing. I, I thought I was supposed to take the second one. <laughs> but it was like, you know, before you know, we have to break them all up. We have to break them up, and yeah, the next day I have to bring them together and turn them to squash it. Do you know what I mean? That's my like, pain. Sure done. But it happens. These things happen. People think that it's like it's a bad changing room if that is happening. Yeah. But, but it was, they, they was arguing over, they, they won the game, do you know what I mean? It was, it was, it was just, I suppose it was just what they agreed. Someone didn't, <laughs> didn't do yeah, what yeah. they agreed in the first yeah. place. But they, they, they got over it and yeah, that's fine, it happens. Okay. Now, last question. And please answer it because a lot of people are like, oh, skim past it and stuff. With the money in the game, yeah, and the price, <laughs> and the prices that, Defenders, defensive midfielders, defenders mm, are going mm, for. Mm, how mm. much do you would you be worth? How <laughs> much would I be worth? Um, who's who's the most expensive defender? <laughs> I don't know. No, no, oh, I'm just going to start just in the prem. Is it Van Dijk? Just... Van Dijk. Eighty the... something, seventy eighty. So, Maguire, yeah, Maguire, 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 Maguire. eighty nine. Is it eighty nine? Something like 80s. Yeah. 70, 80s. Let's just say. Let's say 80 million. (laughs) Bro, a defensive midfielder went for 100 plus. Another one went for 110. Yeah, yeah. Your Mr. Don't train, but can still play at heights. Give me, don't say 80. Don't say If I wasn't. You're being nice. You're being nice. But I didn't, also, I didn't get to see me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That later part. So 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 if if, if you're talking about. One knee. That 25, you know. Before the the knee, then I'd say yeah, eighty. Okay. Yeah. And then with the knee, if <laughs> if I would have got to twenty seven, twenty eight, then maybe maybe it would have been more. It would have yeah. I'm matured. I'm still getting. I'm still improving. But with the one knee, yeah, it's like one mil. So basically, you're. <laughs> <laughs> but either way. Your price tag, your agent would have been laughing with the, with the signing yeah, on for you. We miss that. We, we will miss that, man. But, All right, cool. Wait, I, I'm going to sneak this one in. You or Rio? <sighs> Listen, I'm very <always> to <laughs> say that. 
I always say that I put me next to anyone, week in, week out. You'll you'll see. Yeah. But Rio had a much better career. That's as simple as that. Mm. It's as simple as that. Do I? You no, know, I say Rio and Terry were the two the two best ones. Uh, I think I was I was there with them. So um, I feel like I didn't really have like left foot, right foot. I had control. I could I could bring the ball out of the back. I could I could play. I could defend. Get my head on the ball quick enough on the turn and and all the, all the attributes. Um, Rio was more glitzy and glamorous, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, he was, he was like that. Um, JT was was top as well. So th- them two, for sure, it's fine to to say they're they're better. Yeah, because of their careers. But you're up there with them. But you know, on, on ability, was I there with them? Yeah, uh, I believe so. Fair play, fair play. Yes. Listen, thank you for coming on, man. Well no done. problem. Thank no, you. No, 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 no.